I'm wondering what your thoughts are on the role of the fourth estate going forward in America and the relevance of teaching journalism. So one of the four founders of this country, Thomas Jefferson, said that the press was the most important part of a democracy, the fourth estate. And without the press, we wouldn't have a democracy. And I firmly believe that. And I think that all students need to get, have journalistic training because this is the century of media. And you need to know how to, under, how to do media, create media yourself, and consume media intelligently. So you really, really important. So my three daughters, I don't know, you didn't, we didn't talk about who they are, right? Mm -mm. So Susan, Janet, and Nan, they grew up on the Stanford campus. My husband's a professor of physics. Anyway, when Susan graduated in history and lit, I remember her, me saying, it's like, so that's a great major. Now what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't know. And um, so what she did is she decided she wanted to be a babysitter. This is after, right, four years of college, right? <laughs> but um, I should just tell you, the path to success is always a zigzag. You never go straight to success. And so she did a lot of different things between the time she graduated and where she is today. And today she's the CEO of YouTube. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So the third one is Anne, and you know, not to be outdone by either of her sisters. Um, she majored in biology, as I said, and then now she's the founder and the CEO of 23andMe. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't tell you about Janet. Go the ahead. One that majored in anthropology. So anyway, she got some additional degrees, and today she is a professor of pediatrics at University of California, San Francisco. Solid. <laughs> and her focus is nutrition. She's trying to help all the mothers and children eat properly mm. so that they can avoid the obesity epidemic, the diabetes, all the problems that ensue. Mm. That's really, really important. It all starts in childhood. So everybody wants to know, what did I do to help her get there? And I think one of the things that I do and I do in my class and then with my students also is teach grit. You don't give up. Mm. You're polite, but you don't give up. Mm. And, you, and also with essays in my class, the students learn to write by revising. They don't get a grade until they've decided that it's good enough. And good enough means getting an A. So the grade pressure is off. Mm. And that's the way essay writing should be taught everywhere. Yes, yeah, I yeah. agree. And I have this acronym that I say belongs in every classroom, and it belongs in all the companies, all the industry, and in your relationships. And it's TRIC, T-R-I-C-K. And it stands for trust respect, independence, collaboration, and kindness. And that's what I say belongs in every classroom. My approach uh, is completely the opposite of the helicopter parent, or what is now called the snowplow parent. They clear the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, you, if you believe in your children and you give them the skills they need, and they believe in themselves. When you believe in them, they believe in themselves. And then they can pursue their passion. And so that's basically was, in a nutshell, the, the method that I used. And it started very early. It started when they were small children. Mm. And then continued right along. And of course, you know, they made mistakes, I made mistakes, we all make mistakes. That's, that's life. But you mm. don't give up. You keep going yeah. and you do whatever it is that, that is important to you.